that the, uh, the second skin graft that she's to have will go well. We ask that you will be with her, that she'll have quick healing, get her back up on her feet well. We ask that you be with Lynn, that she will recover and, and be able to be up on her feet. Uh, how frustrating it must be for these ladies to not be able to be as mobile as they, as they usually are. I ask, Father, that you will be with others that are not able to be here. They are dealing with health issues, that you will bring healing and strength, that you be with uh, Tiffany, that you will give doctors wisdom, that you will sh grant your peace, your grace upon her. I ask, Father, that you help Linda as she helps care for her, that you will give her wisdom and strength. Father, may your peace be amongst them as well. It's, when, when one's got health issues, it can cause a lot of stress and nervousness, and we pray that you will give peace amongst that as well. Lord, we ask that you be with us, especially spiritually, that we all have hearts that follow you, that we have hearts that desire to, 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 be, to please you in everything we do in our life, with our thoughts, with our words, with our actions. Father, I ask that you will help us to root out those wicked ways that we tend to follow and that we will, uh, in confession and repentance, turn from them and f be wholeheartedly committed to you. Help us not be distracted from the world and its desires. To uh, dis Help us not to be distracted from you in those things. Help us to be able to enjoy, though, the things that you provide as well, but always for your glory. Father, I ask that you will give us grace as we hear your word, that we might understand and grow by it. I thank you, Father, for the Tilsons and the hard work that they put uh, as, as camp uh, comes and, and all the work that they, they have to do. We pray that you will give them the strength they need, wisdom they need. I ask that you will provide for uh, camp, that you provide for the campers. I ask that not only in, in the camping ministry, but each of our missionaries, that you will have your hand of blessing upon them. I thank you for Mary Sue Lewis and the ministry that she's had. And, and as she uh, now is, is older, but, but does what she can, uh, we pray that you will give her the strength that she desires to be able to minister to others still. Father, I ask that you will have your hand upon us that as we hear your word that we might grow by it as we worship you and in song and and in and, and, uh, listening to your word that we might do so with hearts that are ready and willing and and uh, joyful i also pray that as each one as they uh, as you lay on each heart to give we pray a blessing upon them in return father i ask your blessing not only upon each one here but those that are watching online as well and we ask this in jesus name Amen. Let's open our course books to number 84. I will sing of the mercies. And let's stand. And also while we sing this, uh, Children's Church will be dismissed. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known Thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Thank you. May be seated. This morning we had with us uh, for Sunday school hour, if you're able to be here for that, and enjoyed learning more about camp and what's happening there. Uh, also with us this morning, though, continuing is, uh, we have Pastor Phil is uh, sharing with us from the Word. Um, thankful that they're able to be down here and we're able to enjoy their company. 
uh, it's it's a busy time, so I was glad they were able to to come down. Well, usually it comes around May, and then and then that's about it, because uh, between May and, and August, uh, there's a lot going on up there at camp. So we're thankful for their presence with us this morning. So, we're a few, and we're going to do this camp style. So he's going to be down on the floor with you. I brought all kinds of things with me to Camp Sunday. I'm so excited to see that you guys did such a good job. I liked the scripture reading there when you, you came up and said, Good morning, campers. And I put together all kinds of things that I could come up. I get my microphone on. Oh, cabin seven. Your son wet the bed again. If you can go take care of that. <laughs> uh, things that happen at camp. It's always kind of crazy and what goes on. I have to find this microphone. It's on? Is the microphone on? Oh, good. Thank you back there. So, well, I mean, I brought, I brought some stuff with me. I got ropes. You never know when you might need a rope. I got some first aid. I got some block. I got hand sanitizer. Everybody knows you need that all the time now. I have lots of fun here. I brought some different colors of balls with me. More sunblock when I go to the pool later. Baseball glove. How can you have camp without a little bit of baseball time? And so all of these things that come out. And then, of course, if I was going to do camp Pastor Rip Miller style, I have to have my clipboard. Okay? He goes everywhere with a clipboard. He's got a piece of paper. I don't know if he's all that organized around your church, but out at camp, he's got a piece of paper for every minute of the day. And I really have to take my hat off because that would be better. And I'm going to fall over dizzy here if I wear these glasses any longer. So they're going off too. But hopefully it was interesting there to look at. So, but Camp Sunday. I like it when we're creative trying to get, get things going with camp. A Chuck Wagon meal tonight and different things that go on in the way of camp. I should move this over in the center, shouldn't I? I'll figure out what I'm doing. So every church we go to is always different. And... Uh, Nobody does the same thing, and uh, I always come in, and you try to hit the ground running and figure out how everybody does things and all that, but thank you for, for having us here, my wife Joyce with me today, and, and you're right, we're just a few days away from things getting, getting a, a whole lot busier out at camp. Uh, camp is an adventure. Find your adventure at camp. If you promise not to have a first aid need, I'm going to take that off too, but I might blow the whistle at you if we need to wake you up a little bit. But uh, raise your hand if you would describe yourself as a person of adventure. Look around, keep your hand up and look around, see if you know your church people very good. I have two and a half adventures on this side. This side, quite a few, four or five, but I would say less than half would describe themselves as adventurous people. And I'm going to take you through a couple questions and some different things about adventure as, uh, as we think about that and kind of look at some of the things at camp. Uh, but that's our theme this year. We're saying, hey, find your adventure out at Whispering Cedars. And so we want to we do that and make camp a time of adventure. And we're going to try to do that with a lot of different creative things that happen, happened this summer. Uh, but adventure has a certain, the word, if you're an adventurous person, if I say this is going to be an adventure, that, it's just like a magnet, okay? There's a draw. It's like a bug to a light, okay? There's a certain thing. You, we don't always think. If you're a person of adventure, you don't really think about, well, it might cost something, or it might be dangerous, or it might, it might take a lot of time. That doesn't matter. It's adventure. And there's just an allure, a magnetism, an attraction to this idea of adventure. We want to know what's around the corner. We're canoeing. We want to know what's around the next bend in the river, okay? And uh, we want to know what's over the next hill. We have to go. You ever been on, if you ever hike or anything like that, you know, you can't ever stop. Let's go back. Well, yeah, what's over the next hill? And you have to know. You have to know those things. There might be something you've never seen before, and it's an adventure, and you want to know that you did that. And so that's the pull of the adventure. I would say most of us have completely lost our sense of adventure. Okay. We can now see and know almost anything, anywhere, anytime. We have Google. We can monitor situations. 
How many of you ever went on an adventure where you went cross country and you had to find a motel in the next town and it's getting dark and you're going to look for a motel? How did you used to do that? You just drive around, right? Look for a sign. There's a room here. Doesn't look too sketchy. I think we'll stay here. Okay. How do you look for a motel today? Yeah, we'll get on the internet. We know exactly what town we're going. You can look. You can see the surrounding properties. We were out towards Washington, D.C. one time, and we pull into this motel, and we stay in there, and there are loud engines just revving. I mean, it sounds like there's a NASCAR race right next door, and it's going like crazy. It's late at night. We pull in there, and it didn't bother us all that much. We went to bed. We sleep pretty good. Uh, we get up the next morning, jump on the interstate right there, and sure enough, there's a big old racetrack sitting right there. There must have been a race going on, and uh, noisy as can be. But you know what? If I was booking that ahead of time, I would have seen all the surrounding properties. I would have had a view of the room I was going to be in. I would have spun that around 360 degrees. I would have read reviews. There would have been absolutely no surprises that would come in that room. Today, we can go to a baseball game, and you can pick the seat you want. You know exactly where it's at, how close it is to the concession stand, and what the view of home plate is. And you can see all that right online as you look at all that stuff. The same thing with a concert. You want Michael to get a parking spot for you? You can probably see exactly where your car is parked and probably see it in real time on video. And so the whole idea of adventure is completely gone because you don't have adventure. <laughs> you know everything that's going on in life except for some of those surprises that come around. And, and so we do a lot of those things in the name of adventure. But let's think a little bit about the adventure maybe that we could face if we didn't have all that. Uh, how about adventure here? Raise your hand if we're going to see here. So, and you can keep it up for a little while because we all want to know everybody else's business. So we want to know about this. So raise your hand if you've been out of the country before, out of the United States. So if you look around, I'd say majority way over a majority, almost every hand raised. So if you looked around, you didn't know that about somebody, go up to them afterwards and say, hey, where'd you go? Okay, and find out some things about each other. Okay, interesting. That makes you, even though you didn't raise your hand earlier, if you've done that, that does make you an adventurer, by the way. Have you, s anybody skydive? Nobody. Anybody ever thought I could do it if you would give me a chance? Anybody thought I'd like to? I got one, I got two. At three, I feel like an auctioneer here. Can we get four? No. Okay. <laughs> Skydive. That is certainly an adventure to want to do something like that. Okay. Um, who has been in a vehicle? Not that you, it has to be a car. We're not talking about a plane or anything. Who's been in a car before and been over 100 miles an hour? I see lots of hands here. Okay. Quite a few hands there. How many of you were the driver of the car over 100 miles an hour? Mo the same hands went up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody ever drive a race car of any sorts? At one, two, three. Okay. I don't think the bumper cars count, Craig, but uh, uh, that's good. Boy, they got places now. You can go down to Kansas City on the NASCAR track, and you can pay some big dollars and actually drive a car with some supervision and get up to some speed there. Pretty fascinating. That makes you an adventurous person. Camped for five days in the wilderness. I got one. And Whispering Cedars doesn't count. Uh, two, three, uh, quite a few actually have been out there camping. We used to do a spiritual adventure. I heard you say that and reminded of that <coughs> at Whispering Cedars. And we'd take people on a five-day float trip or a five-day hiking trip in the mountains. And uh, I interesting times. You know, we're used to a certain way of life. And it, it's, a, it's a challenging thing to, to do some of that. It certainly brings some fascinating times. But I tell you what, there's some things. I, I get done with those, and I am so glad to have uh, a nice hot shower. I am so glad to have a very big and hot meal. And uh, those are two things that I really like as I do that. Okay. Uh, I think I had one more if it'll peek up there. Anybody climbed a mountain? Not very many mountain climbers out here. Oh, it's Nebraska. I hear that. All right. Well, at Whispering Cedars, we have our own mountain, right? What's the name of it? Mud Mountain. Mud mountain. Here we go. Well, I think I put that one in sideways. What do you think? Veronica's up there at the very top, I think. Uh, we had an interesting time here, and then I've got another thing I'm going to start for you here. Hopefully it'll go. 
So this is a guy that is uh, going to climb Mud Mountain on a very muddy day, and he is not going to use any ropes. And it was a big challenge there. You can probably see him as he's trying to peek up over the hill. But a couple weekends ago, we had the spring retreat. It rained on us the whole weekend. We sat in the chapel the whole weekend. We played games and sat around in circles and did a lot of different things. And then, I don't know if it was Veronica or not, but somebody all of a sudden on Saturday morning says, we should go climb Mud Mountain. And so I had about 15 people. It was cold. It was rainy. And uh, I'll get to that here in a second. But this guy's about to make it. And he's doing his best not to use a rope to get up Mud Mountain. And I think they're timing him with a stopwatch to do this. I had some sound, but I turned it all off thinking it would be... Oh, and he makes it the good and well done there. So we get to that. Well, there's the, the group that decides to take off and try Mud Mountain here a couple weeks ago. We start out, I want you to notice that we are all clean. We, our shoes are clean. Some of us don't even have shoes down there in the bottom. Okay, and then pretty soon, this is the return picture. I don't know how well it shows up, but they're giving us their best sides there. Uh, shoes are now in hand, clothes are in bags, and uh, they were pretty muddy through all of that. And so the adventure that comes about there. We get some adventure at camp. A lot of you have been at camp. Let's see. Anybody, this has to be pretty quick here. Anybody got a, a bug story? What's the biggest bug you ever saw at camp? Craig? Okay. Anybody with a big bug story? <laughs> yeah oh great okay there there does seem to be a, a, a fair number of bugs out at out at camp okay uh i don't know did i bring up there that if you were at sunday school we talked about uh my son naming, naming this animal the the bee ant and uh so we see those out every once in a while i like to look at those they're they're pretty fascinating um wolf spiders are probably the big thing we get to see out there um the locust Katie Dids, walking sticks, a lot of fascinating little bugs, and of course, plenty of little flies and mosquitoes and all those things as well. All right, how about any interesting story about the mud? Yes. Yes. <laughs> My favorite mud story. Anybody else with a mud story? Uh, junior high camp years ago, we would send the girls out camping one night in tents, and we'd send the boys out on the next night in camping in tents. And they'd take just sleeping bag pillow. We'd just hike out there, stay the night in the tent one time, have a campfire. It, it wasn't all that much. But for the girls there, it started raining about 3 o'clock in the morning. It raining pretty hard. And we had walkie-talkies like I gave Pastor Rip Miller there a while ago. And I, they wake me up out of bed. Um, the girls, it's really wet. It's dripping in our tents. And I said, well, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, I don't know how to... Yeah, they weren't just camping outside their cabins. I mean, we, we took them off into the woods a ways. I said, it could be hard getting you out of there right now. Can you, can you wait? It'll be light here in a couple hours. Oh, we'll try. So they do that. So I hike up there early that morning at, at break of light, and I said, we can, because we had taken them the long way to get there. I said, there's kind of a shortcut to get here, but it was downhills. And I tell you what, those girls were just sliding down mud. It was like rivers going everywhere, and they were right in the rivers, and they just were, it was probably not the most fun activity to have at camp, but it's a mud story. Okay. Ah, uh, unknown food. What is the, what do you call the most weirdest food you've ever seen served at a camp or a different camp? Anybody? quick food story yeah one yes Oh, nice. Yes. A little pink slime with your mac and cheese. Oh, boy. Yeah. 
Anybody else? Good food stories? Yeah? Oh, good. Uh huh. Yes, I say that often at camp. Whatever I'm eating is delicious. I really can't identify it, but it's delicious. But we have some really good food out at camp. And uh, so let's see. That can be an adventure sometimes, especially if you're a very picky eater. Sometimes you get the one meal and you're down for that. And uh, it may be a very common meal, but it's just not something I have all the time. That can be an adventure for somebody out there in that way. Uh, goofy game. What's the goofiest game you've ever done? We'll ask the expert here. Uh, yeah? Yes, okay. <laughs> Very active. <laughs> Lots of contact. Good. So that's in there. I can remember before I was the camp director out there. Um, who was a pastor before here? Nope. Nope. Then I got the wrong guy. DeFord. There we go. I remember being out there one time with Pastor DeFord. And uh, we had this tarp that we stood around and you grabbed handles and somebody would lay down on the tar tarp. And then on the count of three, everybody would step back and lift up. And you could fling this guy, this would be a high school guy, you could fling him up in the air, 10 or 12 feet. And then hopefully he came back down and landed on the same tarp and you were able to collect him safely. But that was, that was kind of an odd game. And um, we didn't do that very long. I only saw it a couple times there. All right. Uh, met a stranger who became a friend. Heard any interesting stories or experiences about that? Michael, you in contact with anybody from camp from years gone back? Not regularly. Shame on you. <laughs> All right. We talked in Sunday school morning about talking about God in the camp atmosphere. I enjoyed the break between Sunday school and church because I talked about people that got saved at camp. I talked about accidents at camp. We talked about unique opportunities to see stars and different things that go on at camp. It was a fun time between the break. You did good. Let's take that out into our community and really do a good job with that. All right? So, yes, we did that. Learned a new thing about God. I always like the... the I kind of make fun of the camp testimony. Do you do camp testimonies when they come back? Yes. Uh-huh. And it's the same things. Camp was fun. Food was good. And I learned about God. And they sit down. And you were asking, how much do I invest to get somebody to camp, Mrs. Jasper? $240. And I get three sentences out of you when you come back. And parents, it's the same way. How was camp today? It was fun. And they fall asleep on a pillow and they're, and they're done. And I... I do my best. I coach our counselors. I coach our campers. I said, when you go home, talk about camp. Share things. They've got a whole sheet they're supposed to fill out about something fun they did, something this. And one of the categories is something they learned about God. Okay? Anybody remember anything that you just, uh, I just learned something two weeks ago at the youth retreat. And so that was it. 1 Corinthians 15. I learned uh, a, a, there was a, an action in there that I hadn't seen before, hadn't noticed. And I'm listening to that, and I'm thinking, wow, that's great. And I, I learned something there about God, about his word at camp. Been to the ER at camp. Joyce has been to the ER many times with people. Yeah, I'm not talking about attending there with a problem. Maybe you've been to the ER. I actually have been at camp almost 20 years. I've never been to the ER at our camp. Yeah, I shouldn't say that, but I, I haven't yet. And, Oh, really? Uh, 
Oh. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I was listening to talking with the Carpers earlier. They were talking about people that had medical episodes and broken bones and sleepwalking off the top bunks and all kinds of adventure. It's not super common. I would say last summer we didn't go to the ER at all, right? Uh, but it has happened and it does happen sometimes not something we try to see so parents we try to have a safe environment but you sometimes just can't keep that kid from walking off the top bunk so ah uh, got lost on the camp property like out in the woods hopefully not between your cabin I see one hand go up okay so we got some adventure there get turned around a little bit out there I remember one time we were playing um years ago trying to find the the counselors all go out and hide and then you get points for coming back in with them and there have been a number of occasions that people have somewhat been lost or misplaced out there and it was light when they went out and hid and then by the time it was dark and they came back in they were taking the wrong turn on a trail and it was it was an interesting thing there okay how about got lost on a road trip to camp just one two my first time ever to go to Whispering Cedars. We were over in Council Bluffs at a church over there, and we, that was where we went to camp, apparently. And so we were going out for a retreat, and um, we're out there, and boy, the pastor had given me directions. I was a prepared youth pastor. I tell you what, I had a map, and I had the camp brochure with me, and we took off out of there and headed for camp. And I got over in Nebraska, and I kind of knew a little bit around that area, and as I'm leaving the metro area, I start thinking, you know how that is when you're going somewhere and you think, I wonder if I'm really going the right way. And then pretty soon doubt sets in and you're really worried about that. And so I get my map out and right across the top it said map of Iowa. And um, it didn't go in very far into Nebraska. I didn't have a Nebraska map. I brought an Iowa map. I lived in Iowa. It makes kind of sense, but it didn't help me too much. We're going and so I knew we went up around Fremont, over through Columbus and all that way. And so we're going through Fremont. North Bend, you still went through Schuyler at that time. And uh, I'm going through there and I'm talking with the kids because I'm a little worried, but uh, hey, where do you guys usually, I'm asking them questions, where do you guys usually stop for snacks or something like that? We don't know, we've never seen any of this area before. And these were high schoolers I had with me. They've been to camp a lot. I said, what do you mean you don't know? And so anyway, we, keep, we get through Columbus. Columbus is a long strip to drive through, five or six miles probably. Uh, well, how about here, where do you stop and eat? We've never seen this town before. And by then, I was kind of back on my camp brochure, and there's a little map there, so I knew I was getting close, but I thought, how can you come to this camp and you've never seen this before? Long story is, they used to take Highway 92 and go out a completely different way, so they had never been there. And I got within about 15 miles of the camp, and I finally stopped and asked for directions, and a guy told me, oh, you can't get there from here, and he sent me clear back into Columbus and around a different way. We finally got there, but it was an adventure, and so lots of things that come up in adventure there. So which way is the compass pointing? Which way are we going? A road trip and different maps that go right around there in that way. We talked about this as the camp dinner, some of the adventures that are real adventures that we do see at camp. The idea of making new friends can be a little uncomfortable and, and, uh, but can be a great adventure that pays off in that way. Uh, who's my leader going to be this year? And uh, then you might wonder, what kind of person is my leader? And uh, that's grape hovering. If you don't know how to do that, I could, I could tell you about that sometime. But uh, there's an art to hovering a grape. Uh, and then I, I want to play, but I don't know how. It's a new game. It's a goofy game. Pastor Rip Miller made up the rules. Uh, like this game here. I don't know. What would you describe this game? There are probably 15 or 20 balls in the picture of all different sizes and shapes and styles. And apparently everybody is running and kicking and throwing them all at the same time. I don't even know what this game is, but we could probably teach you how to play that. You ever tried to navigate a canoe before? There's an adventure for you. And you learn real quick who's in charge, who should be in charge, and how are we going to get back? Gaga Ball is a newer game out of camp, and it's probably our all-time favorite out there right now and still rates pretty high. doesn't take long to learn that one. Swimming pool, everybody knows how to have fun time there. 
adventure with God. You know, you'd be surprised how many people come out to camp that really don't. If you ask them to go open their Bible, sit down underneath God's creation, and spend 15 minutes enjoying some time with the Lord, you know, we have a high percentage of people that can't do that. They do not know how to do that. And you're probably sitting there thinking, wow, I would just love 15 minutes with nobody bothering me, just to open my Bible and pray and study. It would be great. And we sometimes give them study helps and all kinds of things. There's a lot of people that just can't do that. They're not in the habit of doing that. We have an adventure at camp with God in that way. Camp is family. And we have a number of camps that are just going to run down through here. I can say for everybody in your church, everybody you know, we have a camp that you could be at. So we have a Senior Saints camp that, that starts out, and it's going to be a great time this year. Um, family camp getaways. You know, I think that's easy. Moms come out, just get settled into a cabin and a relaxing schedule and uh, enjoy a good time at family camp. Our cabin leaders kind of work as activity and crowd control during that time, and uh, they have a good time out there. I like the chapel times at family camp. We just see the little guys getting involved as well as the teens that are out there. Fun in a big way at our, at our youth camps. And so we have an overnight coming up in the late June. That's that chance for that first time away. Really challenge you to take advantage of that. If you know somebody that's not been to camp, uh, find a way for them to do that. And then three camps that are for your ages there. So we got grade school, junior high, and high school all with different speakers, different leaders, and try to hit that age group with what they really enjoy and like to do. So uh, we get through a lot of those things. Just throw in a few pictures here of fun things we get to do at camp at different times. You get to see Sierra. Is that Echo? Helping? Some of our staff people before a meal, they've set the tables and now they're goofing. There's guys out there at the picnic tables, probably a chuck wagon meal like you're going to have tonight. And there's some guys telling us goodbye, see you later. Find your adventure at Whispering Cedars in 2022. I challenge you, make a trip out. You know, even some of our adult camps that go for a whole week, you can come out for a day, come out to Senior Saints Camp for, for a day. Just come out, enjoy some activities, eat a meal, talk with people, head back home. Uh, I understand sometimes the, the allure and the lack of adventure to being in your own bed and the comforts of your own house sometimes. But come out for a day and see us. It's good to see us out at camp in that way. Well, I didn't do a very good job of getting these pictures in at all. <laughs> so I'll leave that one up to you. That'll be an adventure to even read that one there uh, as you get through that. I think that ends what I was heading for. Yeah, follow me to Whispering Cedars. So back to thinking about adventure. What time are we supposed to wrap up here? Noon, I suppose? Yeah, noon. Well, we better get moving then. I want to give you a couple of things out of God's Word then. So we looked at God's Word uh, I think right away of adventure. The other day we were talking about what time period would I want to live in if I could be somewhere else. And I think, oh, the adventurous cowboy days. And uh, boy, you could be on a horse all day long. You could chase cows around. You could do all these different things. And then you start thinking about the realities of those days. No running water, no electricity, uh, beans every night around the campfire and all these things that we start thinking about and, and the allure and the adventure of doing this sometimes gets overshadowed by the reality. And I started thinking about guys in the Bible and right away when I think of adventure I thought of Abraham. And so if you want to take your Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 12. <coughs> I gave you the life of Abraham in five minutes. How's that? Genesis chapter 12, I think of Abraham being an adventurous guy, mostly because in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, the Lord just says to Abraham, Abraham, pick up, leave your country, and start walking, and I'll tell you when to stop. And I think, wow, that is adventure if we defined it uh, over and over again. That, that would definitely have to be adventure. And so uh, we looked through that. So I just wrote down a couple of events here about, about Abraham out of there. In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1, the Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your country, from your relatives, from your father's house, to the land, the Bible characters. We see them uh, held high for their faith, for their great acts that they did for God. And we see what an adventure they must have had. But I think sometimes we miss some of the, the reality that came at them in that way. 
And I just look at some of that. So with, with a couple of these thoughts about Abraham, I want to show you the, the attraction, the magnetism, the allure to this. And so first of all here, you look down right away and God says, Abraham, if you leave and go where I'm telling you to, I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make your name great. And wow, me? Yeah, I'm going to make you great. Okay, I'm on. I'm out and I'm gone. And if you're an adventurous person, that's all you'd need. You'd go. And uh, then the reality, I think, you start to read verse 1 and you start to see a lot of the reality there. I want you to leave your homeland. I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave your father's house. I want you to leave everything you've known, the security of life, the, the occupations, the way of life that you know. I want you to pack everything up and I want you to go. And uh, that, that was probably pretty tough in that way. So the, the leaving your country. And then, then he says, I'm going to have you go until I say stop. You know, that would do it for some of us right now, wouldn't it? I'm not going anywhere unless you tell me where I'm going and how long I'm going and when we're stopping. Okay, the children in the car on family vacation, right? Are we there yet? Yeah. Abraham, just keep going and I'll tell you. I've got a land. He doesn't tell him where it's at. He just says, go. I've got a land I'm going to show you. Interesting third reality I think that sets in there is you find out that Abraham was how old when he was told to do this? 75 years old. Uh, by the way, what a great thing to have on Camp Sunday was scripture memorization. That's something we do every week at camp for every age. And uh, boy, how many times I've heard, I can't memorize scripture, I'm older. Well, apparently you can memorize scripture. So that was great today. It doesn't have anything to do with Abraham, but it's in there. 75 years old. Talk about maybe being set in life. Now, a lot of you, if I had asked you, were you adventurous when you were younger? I might have got a lot more hands raised, right? Because I'm with you on this right now. All of a sudden, the idea of jumping off of a roof doesn't, isn't attractive to me. I start thinking about things that might happen and what I'm going to feel and sense and what I'll be like the next day. I don't want that kind of adventure. And Abraham, 75 years old, and all of a sudden he's told, hey, uproot, pack your bags, hitch up the wagons. We are going on an adventure at 75 years old. And so what an interesting thing. We don't always welcome change to this extreme. But I tell you what, what great faith. Abraham steps out and he seeks God's adventure. Right away, if we follow down into, to, uh, is it chapter 10 or chapter 12? I think it's 13. Nope. Chapter 12 and verse 10. Right away, another reality steps in. What's he find? Famine. Okay. He gets to this land and all of a sudden everything dries up. There's no crops. The animals are looking kind of thin. Food sources are bad. All of a sudden, this whole adventure, this whole step of faith that God asked me to do is full of bad news. And Abraham is forced with that. And then he, then he goes down, do I trust God? He heads for Egypt. Do I trust God? No, I think Sarah's my sister now. My wife, I'm going to call her my sister. And so it gets hard. Even though he steps out on faith, it was hard for him to do the things that he needed to do there in faith there. Uh, a couple other ones I think of. Genesis chapter 13. He gets to the new land. The famine's over, verse 13, verse 1. So Abraham goes up from Egypt to the Negev, and he and his wife and all that belonged to him and Lot with him. Uh, verse 4, uh, well, no, no. Now Lot, who was with him in verse 5, also had flocks and herds and tents, and the land could not sustain them all. And so the allure now is there's a new land. It's a great land. Come on, guys. I got my partner Lot with me, my nephew. We're going to go out on this adventure together. And all of a sudden, the reality sets in, and that is what? Sometimes family doesn't get along. And there's a squabble there. The workers weren't getting along. Things weren't working together like they should have. And the reality sets in in that way. And besides that, sometimes people are selfish. All right? Abraham is 75 years old. I assume Lot is younger. Lot, I'm going to give you the choice of the land, and we're going to... Now, what should Lot have said? He should have said, now, Abraham, that's a good idea, but I, you're the older guy here, so why don't you pick? And I'll go. Oh, no. Lot looked around and said, this looks really good over here, and he took the best of everything and uh, left Abraham with the other choice there. Family members don't always get along in that way. And so that was kind of tough. But Abraham pressed on. He continued to walk by faith. Then you get into chapters 15, 16, and 18, and there's 
part of this promise, that if, if you know this, this starts to come to Abraham, and that was the promise of what? There was going to be a son. Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. And we see this just real quick in Genesis 15, verse 1. After these things came the word of the Lord to Abraham in a vision. Do not fear, Abraham, I'm a shield to you. Your reward will be great. And Abraham said, O Lord, what will you give me? I'm childless. The heir of my house is Eliezer. I've got a servant over here. Abraham is older now, and he's thinking, I'm going to leave everything, and I'm going to be this great nation. I don't even have a, an heir. I don't have a son. And God had promised this before. At 75, he's not going to have a son until he's 100. He's got 25 years to sit on this promise here. Is it, is it Eliezer? Is it my wife's handmaiden? Uh, is it somebody else? Is there going to be a son? The doubt, the faith, the, the crossroads that existed right there. And, and Abraham was challenged with that. Uh, something I, didn't, I don't think I had paid attention to before. Who laughed at God when they were told they were going to have a son? Sarah and Abraham. Did you realize that? Uh, let's go look at uh, Genesis I lost it there. 16, 1 and 2 maybe. Nope, that's Hagar. Oh, somewhere I didn't write this one down. Oh yeah, 17 and verse 16. There we go. Chapter 17 and verse 16. Verse 15, Then God says to Abraham, As Sarah your wife, you will call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be your name. I will bless her. I will give her a son by her. I will bless her. She will be a mother of generations. Kings of people shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Will a child be born to a man a hundred years old? And so, boy, talk about a struggle with stepping out on faith as you look at what are the adventures. I'm going to have a son. And then the reality, wow. Really? I'm kind of old. And he laughs. And then, of course, we know the illustration of Sarah. She hears the same thing later on in chapter 18. And she laughs. And then finally, in chapter 21, Sarah has a son. They name him Isaac as God had instructed them. But the adventure wasn't over, was it? Quickly, I get to the story of uh, Abraham and Isaac. Abraham one day wakes up, and what does God say to him in a vision? Take your son. Take your son. Your only son. The son that you love. And I, I stopped a little bit and thought about that. Uh, Isaac was probably 15, 16 years old, old by then. And so there'd been a lot of things. And this is the time of graduations, people graduating. And uh, what do you see at all these open houses and things? You see all the picture boards. That, that graduate didn't put those up. Mom did all that. Okay, and they put all that up, and there's first steps, there's first car, there's the first baseball bat, there's all of these things, and the pride and joy that we've seen for all of this time coming together. And then one day, God says to Abraham, Abraham, take your son, your only son, the son you love, and I want you to go, and he needs to be a sacrifice for me. And the, the step of faith, the decision of faith that Abraham faced there, and we've flown through some of that. But you talk about a guy that had adventure in his life. Uh, Abraham did. And there was, had to be some of this allure and attractiveness to adventure and excitement. But there were also realities, and I think he understood and saw those realities. And, and sometimes he stumbled a little bit, but often Scripture holds him up as being a man who followed God and obeyed God. And I tell you what, God calls us to the same decisions. We're probably not going to uproot ourselves and run across country or different things. But God is going to direct us. He's given us directives in his word that we can understand clearly and we need to do. And they're not always easy. There's a reality to them. There's a harshness. There's a difficulty to that. He also guides us with his spirit. And he leads us to do things that sometimes don't make sense. But the peace that passes understanding will guide our hearts and keep our minds. And we will do that. And so it's up to us. We also... Even if you're not an adventurous person here, I believe in some ways God has called us to adventure and he's asked us to step out and to do these things. And we need to trust him, obey him, and follow him in faith in that way. So thank you for letting me share some things about the camp, about people that come out to camp, about the needs that we have here. And I'm excited for your church and the things that you have here, the way that you're able to 
pour into kids' lives by your, your scholarship dinner tonight. I think that's so nice to be able to help and to provide that in that way, and I, I commend you for that. And, uh, and then just look at your personal lives as you go out. May God use you. May God bless you. And maybe you follow him in the easy and in the hard times and be a person of faith like we see in Abraham's life. All right, let's close in prayer here. God, we do thank you for today, and we thank you for this church again. We thank you for your word, the examples we see. God, it was never easy, but God, you, you used some people, and you asked people to do some, some huge, difficult things. And it was amazing to watch that and see that in their lives and to celebrate with them as we see them being successful and following and doing what you've asked them to do. But God, you lay on us the same challenge. God, direct us, guide us, convict us, challenge us, comfort us and encourage us as we take steps to follow in the way that you want us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. I turn it over to you, Pastor Rick Miller. Thank you, Lord.